Hey, what's up you guys? This is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps, and today I'm bringing you another installment of 9th edition unit by unit breakdown for the Space Wolves. If last time Lucas the Trickster was Loki, then Arjak Rockfist is Thor. He's got a hammer he can throw and it returns to him just like Thor. Pretty awesome. He is super epic, super manly. He's got a shield that's a true 3 plus invulnerable save shield. He's old school and he might even replace the Primaris Lieutenant I've been using. So grab a Horn of Ale, Sons of Russ, and settle in for lore, strategies, statistics, stratagems, and ways we can use him in our armies and how I personally will use him and utilize him in my own army. Let's begin. So the first thing I want to talk about is the model itself. We'll start with the stance. It is a great imposing stance and gives a real sense of action. So you have models like Ulrich the Slayer who just stands there surveying a battlefield, wise and regal. This is clearly during the actual fight. He's got his shield raised blocking him from shrapnel of an explosion or maybe oncoming fire and he's ready to hurl that hammer just like Thor through the enemies. It's amazing. I love the anvil on his shoulder. That's classic and very different from any other Terminators I've seen. And another thing that really stands out for him compared to other Space Wolves even is that it appears that on his belt and on his knee he has the symbols of a paw print of a bear, not of a wolf. So you get an even more imposing, grizzled bear motif instead of wolf, which I really like. I'm probably going to do a brown, almost grizzly bear beard. And he has a great, almost feral looking face with good hard lines for dry brushing and highlights where his eyes and cheekbones sit. It's almost as if he's yelling, get down, as he throws his hammer. Ragnar or Logan will duck just in time as it flies overhead and smashes into an orc. I can't wait. This model is awesome. And considering a lot of his synergy overlaps with lieutenants, but yet he's way more epic, he's probably going to, he's probably going to, find a good spot in my list and we'll get that lieutenant out of there cool here we get a better view of his shield we got the lightning bolts we got the hammer behind that you have his shoulder pad with the house symbol of logan grimnar now long ago i used to own this model long before i knew i wanted a battle report channel on youtube and long before i was doing my half red half gray color scheme that i do and i sold that army many many years ago and I've regretted it ever since. So I'm going to get him again. But what I'm getting at is he stood up in terms of scale just fine back in the day. But now that Primaris is out, I'm not sure if he's going to look like a little short guy or if he'll look okay next to Primaris. I understand he's in Terminator armor, so he should be the same size as other Terminators. But with these old fine cast models, you never really know until you see them. Hopefully I get a good one that's not all bent and warped. You know how fine cast can be. Let's get into the lore. Even before he was elated to the ranks of the Sky Warriors, Arjek Rockfist was always renowned as a giant of a man possessed of prodigious strength. Originally a blacksmith of the Bear Claw tribe, Arjak speaks little, but he is certainly no lackwit. He knows full well that he will ever be a warrior and not a leader. Though Arjak keenly misses his Iron Priest brethren, and someday hopes to revisit his former life at the furnace. To any who witness one of his legendary rampages, it is obvious where Arjak's true skills lie, not in the forge, but in the crucible of battle. It was a particularly hot year when Rockfist displayed his true colors. Algae covered the shores of the Iron Isles, and around each volcano, vegetation grew to surreal proportions. But the Iron Priests were too busy in their lava forges to recognize the warning portents of an imminent attack. After all, not all the monsters that live in the oceans of Fenris are confined to the briny depths. So it was that when a thousand kraken spawn boiled out of the seas of Fenris, the Brotherhood of the Iron Isles found themselves sorely pressed. Hingus Blackhand, most senior of the Iron Priests, was left to no choice but to order the vaults sealed against the tide of warrior beasts, trapping hundreds of good men outside on the volcano slopes. Rockfist did not agree with Hingus' decision. Wasting no time on words, Arjak smashed his way out of the vaults with his hammer and forced open an escape route for those caught in the path of the alien tide. Almost all of them made it, but the last dozen Iron Priests turned and stood with Rockfist to bar the vaults once more, setting their feet firmly as the first wave of alien horrors struck. Less than two hours later, the skies above the Iron Isles were scarred by the contrails of a hundred Thunderhawk gunships. Those within the transport base could see that the entire archipelago was teeming with Kraken things, but for one exception. 
a lone figure surrounded by black carapace monsters and the crackling blue arcs of a thunder hammer in full swing. Without hesitation, Logan Grimnar and his men sat about the horde below, quickly savaging it, and with the help of other great companies, driving it back into the sea. Arjak's body, still plugging the entrance to the vaults, was dug out from under a mountain of chitin and scythed limbs and given to the wolf priest, who brought him back from the threshold of Morkai's realm. The great wolf was so impressed by Arjak's incredible strength and fortitude that he made Rockfist his personal champion on the spot. Since that day, Arjak has earned his place in Grimnar's wolf guard a dozen times over. A towering man, Arjak is larger still in his suit of Terminator armor. In battle, the Rockfist bears the rune-encrusted anvil shield with one hand and wields a massive maul, the foe hammer, in the other. Although he prefers to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with an enemy, at need he will hurl the weapon at his foe special teleporters ensuring its swift return to his outstretched gauntlet. As Grimnar's champion, Arjak has brought low Wraith Knights, Orc Warlords, Slavery and Chaos Abominations, and more. But unlike most of his brethren, Arjak does not boast of his deeds, preferring to let his actions speak for him. As befits the heroic ideal, deeds of physical might feature prominently in the sagas of the Space Wolves. Some include trials of strength, like the lifting of runestones or the Iron Grip Contest, but the majority are undertaken through battle. The besting of monstrous foes or the felling of the direst of champions. Arjak Rockfist has more stanzas devoted to muscle power than most. From the thousand piece strike a description of how in a single blow arjak shattered a demon engine to the cast that slew ten a tale of his most famed hammer throw yet for all his acclaim the rock fist has yet to gain entry to the famed 99 deeds of the strength of saga known to every great company this saga reputedly lists the greatest feats of brawn ever performed by the sons of rust as the opening stanzas proclaim however the saga does not include any of the deeds of Limonrus himself, for his epic endeavors stand alone, the pinnacle of which all strive, from his duel with Magnus the Red to the subjugation of mountainous Void Beast. Alright, let's crack open the new Space Wolf supplement and see how he is. Arjak Rockfist, 6 power level. He's got 5 inch movement, 2 plus weapon skill, 2 plus ballistic skill, which comes in handy when he throws his hammer, 5 strength, which is... Something that you should note, because then that brings his hammer up to strength 10 when he attacks. Four toughness, five wounds, which is nice. Four attacks, leadership eight, and save two plus, because he's in that Terminator armor. Okay, so, abilities. He has Angels of Death and Teleport Strike. All normal stuff, so that'll get him up to five attacks when he's fighting in the first round of combat. Uh, he can deep strike, and throw his hammer. Fun stuff. Champion of the King's Guard. Each time this model makes a melee attack against a character unit, you can reroll the hit roll. That is awesome. That's really good. So he's hunt he's hunting characters. I love it. Melee attack. So you can't throw your hammer and reroll it, but you can in combat. That's awesome. Tactical precision. It's an aura. While a friendly Space Wolf core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, reroll a wound roll of one. So the lieutenant bonus. He basically has the exact same skills as a lieutenant, which is pretty huge. Lastly, the anvil shield. This model has a 3 plus invulnerable save. Now this is in the new rules. So this is not a storm shield. Storm shield would have given him a 1 plus save, 4 plus invulnerable save. This is the anvil shield. 3 plus invulnerable save. Awesome. Faction keywords are Imperium, Adeptus Asartes, Space Wolves. Keywords, Infantry, Character, Terminator, Wolf Guard, Lieutenant, Arjak Rockfist. Okay, so anything that buffs Wolf Guard or Lieutenant, or even Terminators for that matter, uh, in terms of stratagems, he could take. So that's great. Let's take a look at his weapon. So the Foe Hammer. This is in the shooting phase. Range 12 inches, Assault 1, Strength times 2, AP minus 3, Damage 3. Each time an attack made with this weapon is allocated to a character or monster, add 1 to the damage characteristic of that attack. Ooh! Alright, so this is not minus 1 to hit like most Thunder Hammers. So, you throw this at a character or monster, suddenly it's 1 shot that hits on a 2. Good. Strength 10, minus 4 AP, damage 4. I like it. Just a quick BAM! Hits with the hammer, take 4 damage off that monster before you charge in. Then in combat, melee, type melee, <laughs> strength times 2, AP minus 3, damage 3. 
Same exact rule. If it's against a character or monster, you add one to the damage, and it is not minus one to hit. So this guy is always swinging at weapon skill 2 plus with strength 10, minus 3 AP, damage 3. Preferably, you throw him against a monster or character, and it becomes damage 4. Ooh, this is awesome. What a character of, of legend. I'm definitely going to be getting him. All right, so only four attacks is not that's like his only downside that i can see but that'll get up to five in the first round of combat because he's a space marine so i'm not going to complain about that only other thing that stands out in terms of negatives are his five inch movement but that goes for any terminator so that's nothing out of the ordinary he's basically like an old school smash captain it's just that he only has five inch movement instead of a jump pack all right, so next thing I wanted to do was compare him to a Primaris Lieutenant because that is what I currently use in my armies, but they fulfill the same role. So I want to see points difference, stats difference, and see if it's worth switching out my Primaris Lieutenant for Arjak Rockfist. So the main difference is my Primaris Lieutenant is 75 points, and that comes with a Mastercrafted Power Sword and a Bolt Pistol. And our Jack Rockfist is 120 points. So quite a bit difference in points there. Um, so when you're looking at the stats, they both have five wounds and four attacks. They both hit on two plus. Primaris Lieutenant has one extra inch of movement at six inches. Um, but it's same wounds and attacks. The difference is the Primar Primaris Lieutenant only has a three plus save. Now I can give him Armor of Rust, which will get him to a two up, five up, I believe. Maybe a two up, four up but also let a unit strike last. So the armor of Russ is like the big thing keeping me wanting to keep him instead of Arjak. But man, Arjak really makes up for it with his combat prowess. He just hits so hard. So he can still give those reroll ones to my Redemptor Dreadnoughts as they walk up the field because they are core, which is hilarious. And then once we get there, he just throws his hammer and charges in and does a ton of damage. Whereas this... Primaris Lieutenant doesn't really do any damage. He's just there to buff and maybe make a unit fight last. So it gives me a whole different part of the game that I could use the model for. I mean, I really never fight with the Primaris Lieutenant. He just hangs behind the wall of Dreadnoughts, gives him rerolls, maybe grabs an objective. But with Arjak, I mean, I could really send him in, let him do work. I mean, and even if I don't, even if I choose to just go, you know what, I'm just going to grab this objective. He has a 2 plus save. Five wounds and a three plus invulnerable save. He's pretty tough. Now he does not have Primaris keywords, so he can't do uh, the only wounded on four up stratagem, transhuman physiology, which does help. But you were never really using that on a single lieutenant character anyway. He's just so much better than the Primaris lieutenant. But losing armor of Russ is hard because every once in a while that really comes up. And it really makes a huge difference. I mean, if you get charged by a bloodthirster and you can make it fight after everyone else around you, that's pretty key. That being said, Arjak himself might just survive all the hits from the bloodthirster and hit back and do a ton of damage at four damage per swing. So it really just depends on what you need for your personal list. I mean, already my list is all named characters. My Primaris Lieutenant was the only non-named or as we used to call them, special character. But let's be honest, one of the main draws of Space Wolves are the characters. These just epic Viking heroes of sagas. And they have so many named characters that are so full of flavor and fluff and lore that it just makes you want to use them. I mean, I also say the same thing about Ultramarines. When Noah runs Ultramarines, yes, their their chapter tactic is powerful. Everyone can leave combat and still shoot. But the main draw of Ultramarines, in my opinion, is all the characters. Tigerius, Gulliman, Kalgar, uh, Kronos, the tank commander. I mean, there's so many different Ultramarines characters. And I feel like the same thing goes for Space Wolves. There are so many good named characters that I can't help but want to use them. Now, I know it's a little ridiculous that they would all show up at the same battle, but I don't really care. This whole game is ridiculous if you really start thinking about everything too much. <laughs> this is a everybody join in, time to defend Fenris against the enemy type army. Uh, where they wake up all the dreadnoughts and bring all the named characters. And that's pretty much my army. So I'm definitely going to buy him. 
I'm definitely going to paint him up in our awesome half red, half gray color scheme. I'm going to give him a brown beard. He's going to look great. So because he's a character, there are so many stratagems that he can use. I mean, literally all of the stratagems in the Space Wolves supplement he can pretty much use. He can do Relentless Assault for 1 CP to consolidate an extra 3 inches, which is pretty amazing to tag tanks or tag units. He could spend 0 CP on Counter Charge, where he heroically intervenes 6 inches instead of 3. Because he's a character, it's only 0 CP. It's pretty great. Um, I mean, you've got... If you fight Thousand Sons, Emperor's Executioners, which is the one where you can re-roll the hit roll and wound roll against Thousand Sons, which is crazy. Um, you got Savage Strike, which is plus one to wound, which is great. It's only one CP. And at strength 10, it just makes it so you can wound Imperial Knights on a two plus. <laughs> uh, go for the throat. I mean, you have so many different ones you can use. And do not forget, Space Wolf players, you can use all the stratagems from the Space Marine core codex as well. So if he dies before he gets a swing, you can spend 2 CP and make sure you fight before you die. I mean, there's just all kinds of them that you can use. I really like that he gives you a little more flexibility than the Primaris Lieutenant, which is what I keep comparing him to because they do the same aura reroll. He's better at taking things down. He's harder to kill. He can deep strike. I mean, there's just lots of good utility here. 120 points is a lot, but in another way, considering what he gives you and he's so hard to kill, 120 points isn't a lot. I don't know. It just depends on how you feel you can best use 120 points. I feel like I'm used to spending 75. I can find those points somewhere. I'll drop some Fenrisian Wolves, which hurts because they help me grab objectives. Or I can drop one of my Dreadnoughts, keep the Wolves, and maybe add more Wolves. And the points difference will increase the Primaris Lieutenant to Arjak. I would really like to know what you guys feel about Arjak. If any of you use him out there, um, how you best utilize him. I think I'm going to get him, guys, and it's going to be a lot of fun just to have yet another heroic Viking awesome character ready to kill whatever he fights and still buff my Dreadnoughts on the way up the field, which win-win. So this is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps, Sons of Russ. Let me know what I missed. Let me know how you've used him or if you've had to play against him, how well he did. If you think he's a waste of points, please tell me so I don't waste a bunch of my life painting him. But I don't think he will be. I think I think he's going to be great. I think he's going to look great and play great and just add yet another headache for my enemy to worry about with characters. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. Keep tuning in, guys. I've been trying to get Space Wolves on the channel more and more, but we have lots of other armies as well. This is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps. Till next time, cheers!